And I'm excited to kick off this series for you of prayer and fasting. Uh, I'm not the right guy to be doing that, really, you know, but uh, um, it's, I, I am really believing that God is going to reveal himself more. And, and, and it's, it's been, as I just have already said this morning, this more, let's not make it just more of what we see him do in his power. Let, let it be that we would know him more. Because I'm convinced, you know, I don't know, I've been around for a while now. And I really just don't believe I've even seen a little bit of who Jesus is yet in his fullness. The son of God. If you read the, the, the first chapter of the gospel of John, he was in the beginning. Nothing was made without him. Everything, the book of Colossians tells us that in him we are complete. Anybody yet feel complete? I still got a ways to go before I'm complete. There is more. Do I really believe that in him lies the actual source of my life? Again, in the book of Galatians, I think it is, it says, in him we live and breathe and have our being. That's in the book of Acts, actually. But uh, the teacher will, tr will, will correct me there. And, and I, ju I just want us to maybe today, as I'm speaking, just ask God to reveal more of himself to you. Because in him, in, in, in my revelation of who he is, there is power there. There is change there. There is transformation there. But it's not just change for the sake of change. It's change because I've embraced another part, another glimpse. I often wondered why in heaven... The angels are just going round singing glory, glory, glory. I was thinking once maybe they get bored just going round, 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 singing glory, glory, glory. But here's the deal. Every time they're around the throne of God, they get more of a glimpse of his glory. They get more of a glimpse. They get more insight into who he is. He goes on forever and ever and ever. And sometimes I think in our lives, our busy lives, our Christian walk, and even our, what I would call our religious lives, we settle for what we already know. Isn't it wonderful that 2,000 years ago he died on the cross for me? That he's my saviour. But if, he, if that's all he is, I'm just going to live out of that. But he's so much more than just my saviour. He's the son of God. He's my healer. He's my peace. His presence in my life. He is everything and yet I live in a way that is not necessarily reflecting that he is my daily bread, that without him I do nothing. And I believe that in this season, this few weeks, God is going to reveal himself to the degree you want him to. Have you heard the scripture in Philippians 2 verse 13, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. How many believe God's working in you right now? What's he working to do? He's working, he's working to transform your life, but he's working in you to show you more of who he is, to reveal more of himself. Isn't it amazing that he would save me, but then he wants to know me and he wants me to know him in his fullness. Paul said, I want to, Forget everything. I'm prepared to forget everything that's ever gone that I may know him. There's a guy that wrote a pretty good chunk of the New Testament and his prayer is, oh, everything's been okay in the past, but I'm willing to forget it all because there's more of him to know. And that's my prayer for his church, is that we will know more. That Philippians 2 verse 13 in the Passion Translation, I love it this way. It says, God will continually revitalize you. How many people need revitalizing in this few weeks? Well, always, but in particularly this few weeks. Implanting within you the passion to do what pleases Him. I want to be revitalized. I want to spend this year growing in my knowledge my discernment, my revelation of who he is, and I want to be revitalized into the person that he wants me to be. In fact, I don't just want it, I need it. 
I need the, 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 the vitality that Christ brings to my life on a daily basis. But here's the thing, it doesn't just happen. Have you noticed? I don't get revitalized just by coming to church, as Miles said, for an hour on a Sunday and then go about my business. I got to put time aside to be revitalized. I got to put time aside. I, I, I don't just want to wish that he would reveal more of himself to me. I got to put myself into a place where he can reveal more of himself to me in that secret place, in that closet that he refers to. Because I find that, you know, like you, I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning and there's going to be a lot to do. There's going to be the phone's going to go and the emails are going to come in and all the stuff's going to go on. And I can just get into the week, roll week, roll month, roll month. And I'm walking out of this. If I was honest, I better be honest. There's been years where I've just walked with the same Jesus that I walked with last year. Not more of him. I'm walking out of the same revelation of who he is. It hasn't grown. And I find the life, the vitality, the revitalization doesn't just come in more energy. It comes in the vitality that comes to my life by seeing more of him. Some of you have been around longer than I have. But I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you to push more in because there's more to know of him. Sometimes what I've known in the past is the barrier to what knowing more of him in the future. And my challenge today is this, as we enter into this prayer and fasting time, we will, we, will, we will see him in a whole new light. We'll be like the angels, glory, glory, glory. I saw more of Jesus today. I saw him in a different light today. Do you believe he's that big? Do you believe there's that much more of him to have than what we have already discovered? I'm a Pentecostal through and through. I believe in the power of God, the presence of God and all that. I'm believing for miracles every day of my life. But my prayer in this season is, God, show me more of who you are. If I know who more of you are, I will live out of that. I live out of, I don't just live out of knowledge. I live out of revelation. I might know that the Scripture says He can heal me. But until I get a revelation that He is my healer, I'm walking in knowledge, not revelation and power. When, I, when my life is in turmoil, I'm anxious. I don't know what's happening and fear grips me. It, I, I might know He's my peace. But until I have a revelation that in Him, He holds me in my hand. He loves me so much that my heart becomes at peace because I know who He is, not just what He can do. And all of what He does comes out of who He is in my life. 2 Corinthians 3.18. You'll probably know this if you've been around a while. It says uh, in the New King James's translation, and we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Anybody in His image yet? <laughs> One person is willing to put up his hand there. <laughs> I just want to, this is the, is, is, don't you find the Gospels, don't you find the Kingdom of God a mystery? In one sense, I am in His image because I'm a child of God. And I'm right with him and he's forgiven me and I'm cleansed and in some senses, but I have to say, no, my wife would say, I'm not quite like Jesus yet. <laughs> in three weeks time, I've been married 45 years and still I'm not quite like Jesus yet. I'm still, she would still say there's a fair, in fact, I think this morning on the phone, she said there's still a way to go. <laughs> so I've made it, but I haven't made it. And I want my life to reflect. I do a lot of, uh, I paddle surf skis and I hang around with a bunch of guys that do it who, well, you might say they're not quite Christian. That would be a nice way of saying it. And I'm praying for them. But again, my prayers 
my prayers lately have gone to Jesus, help me show them you. Not preach to them. And the only way I can show them you is because of who you are in me. That in the midst of my turmoil, when they're going through turmoil, there's peace. Why? They may ask. Because of who he is in me. This is all introduction, by the way. I better get moving, hey. But I'm just, I, I, I just, I just really, we can, we can even get religious about having a prayer and fasting season every year, can't we? We don't want to get religious about anything. We want to get into the mystery of who Christ is, the grandeur of who Christ is, the greatness of who Christ is, that we may see more of him. To be transformed means to be fashioned. God is fashioning you. Dictionary definition to be transformed is to change completely the appearance or character of someone or something, especially so that thing or person is improved. To be transformed, to be improved, to be changed into his glory. Matthew chapter 16 uh, and verse 13 to 19. I'm just going to share a few scriptures on this today and hopefully be on time, which is looking unlikely. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am? So, sorry, who do I, who do they say I, the son of man am? Many of you will have read this before. And again, I just, just stay, put yourself in the scene. Here they are. Many people around him. And he asks a question of, of his disciples and anybody around him, who do people say I am? And they said, well, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said, who do you say that I am? It's a great question today. Who do you say he is? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. And I want you to catch this, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. We pray for power. Power comes from revelation. Jesus says to Peter, you are blessed. I want you to think about this as you go into your prayer and fasting season. You are blessed. Not because someone told you information about me. You are blessed because you have revelation of me. And on the revelation you have of me, I will build my kingdom in your life. It won't come through flesh. It won't come through just knowledge. It will come from revelation. But here is the, 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 the thing, is we need to put ourselves in a position for God to reveal more of himself. I have received him, I, I would say he is the Christ, the son of the living God, but I need to know more of what that means. What is wrapped up in Christ, the son of the living God? Sure, as he's come to the earth 2,000 years ago, he came to seek and save that which was lost. He is my saviour. I have that revelation, but there's much more I need to have. And as my revelation, as God reveals more of himself to me, the more I experience the power of his kingdom in my life. And I wonder sometimes when I'm going through the motions, when I'm busy with life, when I'm not separating myself for seasons, that I'm running on the revelation I used to have. And my prayer for us is it will be fresh. Just so you know, right across, you know, it may not all be this month, last month, this month, this period of the year, the whole of the INC movement is entering into what we call a fresh air time of prayer and fasting. So just, just as you're praying as well, just, uh, just, just, just know that there are people all over the nation praying um, 
for you, for us, for God to move in our world. Let me give you just a quick example uh, of just even what I, I guess what I'm trying to communicate this morning, even in my own life in recent months. It's as fresh as months. Uh, in the book of Romans, I'll read it to you. The book of Romans chapter 1. Paul says this, as much as in me, as much as is in me, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome. I just want to give you a bit of context here. Paul's preparing himself to go to the Roman church. And he says right through the book, he prepares them through the first part of chapter one. For, and, he, and he comes to this verse and he says, I am eager, some translations say, I am ready to preach the gospel to you. What would it be if Gary came to Sydney to Elevation Hills and said, I'm, I'm, I've come to preach the gospel to you? Many of you might say, I already know the gospel. Most of us. Most of us in this room. And if not, then maybe by the end of the service you will respond to the gospel. But wouldn't most of us in this room have responded to the gospel? Why would Paul come and say to the church, I want to preach the gospel? Because here's the thing. I should never stop hearing the gospel. There's more of the gospel. Just because I received Christ 30-something years ago, there is more in the gospel for me. And Paul says to the church, you might have received Christ, but I'm going to come and I'm going to preach more of it to you. Isn't it amazing those songs we're singing this morning? How many times, 39 years I think I've been saved. I would have sung about the cross thousands upon thousands. Why is it so fresh every day? Why is it so fresh? Because there's more of it to experience. And Paul says this, he says, I want to come and preach to you for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it's the power of God under salvation for everyone who believes, for the first Jew and for the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. From faith to faith. There's that word again. In the gospel is not knowledge passed on. In the gospel is righteousness revealed. From where? I'm praying for my friends that don't know Christ, my family that don't know Christ. But my prayer these days is God reveal yourself to them. Reveal. Reveal. And it says here, the righteousness of God is revealed. Just a bit of testimony, my journey. I've been preaching for a while now. I've heard the term righteousness of God thousands of times. In fact, you may have heard of a guy by the name of Martin Luther. He started the Reformation of Grace back in the 1600s. The term, the righteousness of God, was a term that caused him to hate God. Why? Because previous to his revelation, the righteousness of God was about how holy God was and how holy he should be and he knew he could never make it. And so he thought God was totally unfair to put this standard of righteousness on man when he knew he could never make it. Until he got a revelation of this is the righteousness not of God, but the righteousness from God to me to be declared righteous. And the word, here's my journey, just quickly, is the word righteousness means right standing. Yeah, you, you might think that. You might think I should have known this, okay? I probably did, intellectually. But as I studied it, if Ben and I are in right standing with each other, that means there is no barrier between us. Neither of us owe, there is no liability. I'm not in debt to him. I, am, I have a complete, open relationship with him because there is nothing that stands between him and me. You know what it did? It changed my prayer life. 
because of a, now I knew that I'm righteous in God through the cross and all of that stuff. But you know, there was parts in me that if I didn't quite measure up, it, I would, I would, I would sort of subconsciously. You would never do this in Sydney, I know, but you might go into your throne and you think, oh, I, I wonder if there's anything between me and God, and it would affect the way I pray. If I'm praying for healing, I wonder if I've got to deal with anything before God will heal me. None of you would do this. But then I got a revelation that I'm in right standing with God. I feel guilty saying it because I know me. But I am in right. (laughs) You are God, totally holy. And yet you are in right standing with him. You can come and ask anything because there is no blockage or barrier between you and him. See, out of a simple revelation of who he is and my standing in him, it shifted my prayer. Now I don't ask for right standing. I go into my closet from a position of right standing. There is no liability between him and I. Now I can convey this information to you. But my prayer is that the Holy Spirit would reveal this to you. In the gospel of Jesus Christ, your right standing with God is revealed and it happens in a place where God's able to speak and bring himself alive and and free you even more to experience who he is in his fullness and how it affects your daily life. I'm from Queensland, I'm slow. I realise that. But it's just an illustration of what revelation can do to change your world. You know what I'm doing now? God, show me more. Now I'm in right standing. It affects the way I approach you. What else do I need from you? When I'm... I'm working at the moment in some pretty challenging areas for our future. And, 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 and in the natural, it's quite concerning. But be able to learn I'm in right standing. God, you are my now provider. We can have at our generosity time a message about him being our provider. But is my revelation of him. Here's another one I just received the other. Oh, I sort of received. You know why I have trouble giving sometimes? Because I really wonder if he'll keep giving to me. If I really believe that he will keep giving to me, then it's easy for me to keep giving away. But if I doubt that he is is so committed to me, then maybe I withhold a bit because I've got to protect myself. Can I have the musicians, if I could, please? I'm about out of time. Maybe you just, in your seats... Just close your eyes for a minute. Religion will give us all the wrong ideas about Jesus. Religion will tell us that God saved us 2,000 years ago. Now it's up to us. We feel like we've got to make it on our own. We feel like that maybe God has saved us, forgiven us, but now left us to make our own way. As I said before, Jesus has said, you are complete in me. Without me, you can do nothing. And today, I wonder how many of us and how much we're leaning, we're desperate, we are at peace with we can walk in the power of knowing that he holds me in the palm of my hand and he'll never let me go for everything my life needs is found in Christ that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly more above all we ask or think because friends he is more 
exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. So this morning, just in a time of reflection for a minute or two, as we prepare ourselves for this time of separation, would we make the prayer of our heart today, Jesus, would you show me more of you? In the places where I experience emptiness, Jesus wants to fill that place with who he is. In the place where there's fear and worry, Jesus wants to fill that place with who he is. In him, in him, in him. When there is abandonment in my life and I feel unloved, Jesus wants to fill that place with his love for you. And I pray that every one of us this morning would reach out to him and say, Jesus, would you show me more so that I can walk in more of who you are? Maybe you're in this place today and you've never really considered who Jesus is. Or you experienced him, experienced him in some way in the past. But you knew something was missing. I'll tell you what was missing. What was missing is an understanding of who he is in his completeness. Maybe you're here today and you realize that everything's not right in your life, in your world. Something is speaking to your spirit right now that's saying there is more. That this Jesus that this man speaks about is real. That he did die for me on a cross. That I may be forgiven and I may be complete. That, that he is a God that loved me so much. Or not loved, but loves me so much. That he would reveal himself to me right now. And I just believe across this room that's happening. Those of us that have been around for a while and those of us that are brand new. Like Simon Peter. Who are you, Jesus? You are the Christ. You are the Christ. I, 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 it's revealed to my spirit. You are the Christ. Maybe you're in this place today and you've never acknowledged that. You have never responded to that. You have never had it revealed that He is the Christ and He is your Savior and He does love you and He died on the cross to save you. And today you see it. I pray this morning you would embrace that revelation. You would come around the leaders of the church and let them help you grow in that revelation that you indeed would receive Christ as your Lord, your Savior, and you would never stop growing in your knowledge of Him from this day till eternity. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.